Welcome guys to Lung Computers Biology 2.9. Today we will be discussing about plant tissues. In the very first lesson of biology, we discussed what a tissue was a, in the hierarchical order of living things. We discussed that organelles make cells and cells make tissues. So we're going to be discussing about tissues today and specifically plant tissues. So a tissue is a group of physically linked cells which have a common origin and are specialized for a common function. So the plant tissues can be divided into two parts, simple plant tissues and complex plant tissues. What we're going to do today is just going to be simple plant tissues and we're going to do the complex ones next time. So what exactly is the difference of a simple plant tissue and a complex plant tissue? One thing is that they're all made out of plant cells. We all know what plant cells are. We did it last time when we were discussing the structure of a cell. You should remember what it looks like. If you don't remember what a plant cell is and you don't have a clear idea of it, please do go to the previous video. It will have everything you need to know about the cells. The difference between the simple tissue and the complex tissue is that simple tissues are made out of one type of cell. Even though we discussed what the general structure of a plant cell is, you need to remember that each cell is different from each other and there are different types of cells. Even though we generally have a model structure of a plant cell, that doesn't mean those are the only type of cells which are found in plants. So the simple tissues are divided into three parts. Parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Now these are the simple types of plant tissues and all you need to do is remember all three of these and you should be able to give a brief description about each and every one of these by the end of the lesson if you can you can move on to the next part so without further ado let's begin the cells first of all we have parenchyma i'm going to go ahead and start drawing the structure you guys can see that it is basically round it looks exactly like an animal cell but the only difference is it does have a cellulose hemicellulose and pectin cell wall which means it is not an animal cell but remember even though it does have a cell wall it is rather thin compared to the other cells in the plant the parenchyma are round living cells you need to remember that they are living cells because when we get on to the other parts like sclerenchyma they're actually dead cells they have a vacuole a tonoplast and vacuolar sap just like normal plant cells and they have nucleuses as well as plasma desmatas to connect them to other strands another very common feature you can see in parenchyma cells is that there are spaces between the two cells or the group of cells they're actually gaps and they're called intercellular air spaces so we know that they're round living cells and you also need to know that these cells are isodimetric which means that they are equal in diameter throughout the cell that's why it is a round cell even though it may not be completely even i mean there are natural variations within cells but generally it's an isodimetric structure which means it's around the same diameter through the through any point. Why do plants have parenchyma tissues? It's found in the roots, leaves and fruits and seeds of plants, so more likely anywhere. And the function of these tissues depend on the location that they can be found in. For example, in herbaceous plants, which means green plants which don't have a hard stem, for example, like a banana tree the main function of parenchyma cells are to provide support because there are no other cells doing that how they provide support is very interesting it's using a mechanism called the turga pressure there are continuous columns of water that goes through the plants and it makes a rigid line now all these cells get together and basically create a skeleton like structure from water. Don't confuse this with the hydroskeleton. This isn't a hydroskeleton, but it acts similar to one. Another function of parenchyma cells it is that acts as packing tissues, which means it can be found between various other types of tissues. The third function is that there are special parenchyma cells found in the mesophile. Now, what's great about that is that those cells have a lot of chloroplast. 
and they help carrying out photosynthesis. The fourth function is that it is a storage tissue in leaves, fruits and seeds and also in roots if the roots happen to store starch like potatoes. And finally, the fifth function is that the parenchymal cell walls provide a pathway for the transportation of water. And last time we discussed the three pathways called the apoplast pathway, symplast pathway and the vacuolar pathway. Don't worry too much about that. That is actually in the sixth unit. The whole reason that we put that there is just so you get an idea because later on we will be using the words apoplast, symplast and vacuolar pathways. So it would generally be better if you knew what we were talking about. So the apoplast pathway is the pathway that sends water through the cell walls and the parenchymal cell walls provide a perfect pathway for that. That was fairly simple, right? We've completed parenchyma. You should be able to draw the structure. You should know that it is a round isodimetric structure with a nucleus, intercellular air spaces and a cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin cell wall. It is a living cell and it has a large vacuole, it has a vacuolar sap bound by a tonoplast. In the cytoplasm, there is a prominent nucleus. Remember guys, if you're writing an essay, if you write that there is a nucleus, you will not get any marks. I know that's wrong and you're supposed to get marks for it. I mean, come on, what you're saying is true. But the point is, you have to say it is a prominent nucleus and it has large intercellular air spaces. If you don't say that, Unfortunately, you won't be getting any marks. And finally, remember the functions that parenchyma is found in roots, leaves, fruits and seeds, different places of different functions. The five functions are support, packing, photosynthesis and storage and transportation of water. And then we move on to the second simple plant tissue, which happens to be calenchyma. Now this is kind of like parenchyma, it's a bit different though. These shapes are polygonal and they're also living cells. But the thing is, the cell walls in the calenchyma are extremely thick. Compared to the parenchyma, it is a really, really thick structure. And the cell walls are made out of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin. Again, remember the three components of the cell walls. And besides the fact that the cell walls are thick, the corners are even thicker than the general width. So look at the structure carefully when I'm drawing it. You need to be able to identify what kind of tissue a diagram is. If they give you a tissue, you need to be able to look, take a look at it and say, this has large air spaces, so this must be a parenchyma tissue. And if this has extremely thick cell walls, you know what, that it's a calenchyma. The cytoplasm, the peripheral cytoplasm, which means the cytoplasm around it, it's bounded by a plasma membrane and also contains a large vacuole. Remember the words large vacuole. One feature that you can use to differentiate parenchyma cells and calenchyma cells is that the calenchyma, they don't have any intercellular air spaces, so that's a big giveaway. The main function of calenchyma is support and protection. And if you're going into detail, the support is that it provides rigidity to herbaceous plants because if it's just parenchyma, that won't be good enough considering the parenchyma cell walls are extremely thin. Therefore, calenchyma does a much better job at it. And the locations is generally found in the stem, leaf and stalk. But remember this thing. Calenchyma cannot be found in roots, it cannot be found in monocot plants, and it cannot be found in secondary tissues. We're going to go into the classification of plants later. We divide it into monocots and dicots. Don't worry about that yet, but just remember that it is not found in roots, monocots, or secondary tissues. And finally, we move on to the third plant tissue, the, the third simple plant tissue called sclerenchyma. Now, of all the tissues we did so far, this happens to be the only dead or non-living cells. Primary cell walls consist of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin, just like the other two, but they also have a secondary thickening. And this secondary thickening is made out of lignin. Lignin is an impermeable membrane and because of that, cells die off. That's why sclerenchyma tissues happen to be dead because of the secondary thickening. 
In the center of the parenchyma and cholenchyma cells, we said that it has a prominent nucleus, but here it doesn't have a nucleus at all. In the center, there is an empty lumen, which means there is an empty hole, and it does not have a cytoplasm. And remember that there are no intercellular air spaces. So, there are two types of sclerenchyma cells that you need to know of. One is called the fibers, the other is called the scleride. It's a polygonal structure if you take a transverse. If not, it is an extremely long strand with tapering ends and it joins to form these long rows. The sclerides are also called stone cells. Remember that, guys. So, pits can be seen on cell walls on both fibers and stone cells. The fibers are extremely long, long strands of sclerenchyma tissue and stone cells are spherical. So where can you find these sclerenchyma tissue? Well, here's the thing. The two different types of tissues can be found in two different locations, so we're going to have to study about them separately. The fibers can be found in dicot stems, which is up the other the other classification of plants, monocots and dicots. So the fibers can be found in the dicot stems of the pericycle. Don't worry about what the pericycle is, we'll get to that. Just remember that it can be found in the dicot stem of a pericycle. It's present in the vascular bundle. Again, we have a whole section in plants, so don't worry. And it's found in leaves and roots. Unlike cholenchyma, which cannot be found in roots, parenchyma and sclerenchyma can be found in roots. So that's where we can find the fibers, but where can we find the stone cells or the sclerides? You can find it in the pericarp of some fruits like pears. It can be found in aquatic plants. And there are irregular shapes like star-shaped sclerides, which are termed idioblasts. It prevents the collapse of air spaces. So the stone cells can also be found in stuff like the coconut shells and also coffee and date seeds. The main function is to provide mechanical strength and support, just like cholenchyma. Just try and remember most of that because that's all you really need to know about the three simple tissues. Now after this, I'm going to give a brief description of all three, comparing them to each other so you get a better idea and we will move on to complex plant tissues which happen to be the xylem and phloem vessels which you have heard about and we'll go to that next time. So what exactly are the differences between the three types of simple tissues? We know that the material of all three except sclerenchyma is cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin. Sclerenchyma has lignin. Parenchyma has uniformly thickened cell walls. Cholenchyma does not. They have thickened edges the thickened corners of the cell walls. The sclerenchyma is non-living, everything else is living. And the sclerenchyma cells do not have a nucleus, while the other two have a prominent nucleus. There is no cytoplasm in the sclerenchyma and there is no protoplasm. The vacuole is absent in the sclerenchyma, whereas the parenchyma and cholenchyma have all of those. All three of them have pits and the intercellular air spaces can only be found in parenchyma cells. Now, if you could remember all of that, congratulations, you have completed this part and move on to 2. Point, I believe it's 2.10, where we will be talking about complex tissues and then we move on to animal tissues. So, thank you guys for watching. See you again next time. If these videos do help you, don't forget to like, comment, and share with your friends. Until next time, have a great day.